So yes, I am the archivist and photo collection manager at the Wildlife Conservation Society. Um, I'm just gonna give a look at how we use Preservica right now and how we're looking at using it going forward. Um, that going. So about WCS, it was founded in 1895 as the New York Zoological Society and it operates the four New York City zoos, so Bronx Zoo, Central Park, Queens, uh, Prospect Park zoos, and the New York Aquarium at Coney Island, um, as well as a global conservation program that is in 60 countries. Uh, the archives are located at the headquarters at the Bronx Zoo, and they serve as the institutional archives for the entire organization. Um, so some background on the library and archives themselves. Our staff is currently two full-time uh, people, which is myself and our library and archives director, and we have a part-time library assistant, and we have some interns that uh, usually come through. Um, and because of the way we have a, a small staff that has many things to do, for when we were looking at how to set up something for digital our digital archive for the organization and the archives, Preservica seemed like the best option for us just because it was able to do everything and um, because I am the one who's mostly managing it, it was going to be the the best option for me to manage our, all our materials. So we um, have been using Preservica since 2019 um, right now and we have two collections that are currently publicly available through Universal Access. And um, once we got through the process of learning how to use Preservica, we've started to use it in some of our regular workflows of having uh, like web crawls for WCS.org. And we recently put together our digital accessions workflow and Preservica was able to become an immediate uh, part integrated into that. Um, just a kind of quick background look at what our internal system looks like is we have it broken up into accessions and collections, pretty simple. And then within that, um, kind of broken up by year, uh, other top level things we want to make sure are, are noted. Um, and you can see we have more collections in there right now than we have public, but um, we're also, you know, just using it as what it's for, for digital preservation. So that's just where we like to have uh, some more backups for our digital collections and we're currently working on moving more into uh, Preservica as well. Um, and this is what our universal access currently looks like, the front page um, with the two uh, collections we currently have public and we hope to add more with time. Um, and I'm gonna go more into this uh, in a little bit, uh, but what our asset page for uh, the collections currently looks like. Um, we had a very specific need for the one very large collection, which I'm going to focus on, that we put into Preservica. And uh, Preservica was really easy and great to work with to make the collection look the way we wanted it to for the public. And so that collection is the Department of Tropical Research Illustrations. We had them digitized around the end of uh, 2019. It's 2,200 digi uh, illust scientific illustrations. Um, and whenever the pandemic started, we actually were, the staff was spread out in a couple different places. Some people were in, were in New York or in the tri-state area. I had actually gone to Oklahoma, but we were all able to work together using Preservica to get this collection online uh, pretty easily once we got, I learned how to use the system and had a lot of help from Preservica uh, on doing that. So we had, Preservica has a great like out of the box way to, you know, ingest and display your material and helps you get things customized for uh, both the internal, what you see explorer view and the external uh, public view for universal access. But we, we had some very specific needs for DTR, which were, mainly a custom schema because we had certain metadata fields that were you know, beyond what are Dublin core. And then we also had specific uh, requirements for the access copies. So Preservica has the option to convert your preservation copies to the access copies, which is great. And but it was just like in this one instance for the collection, we wanted something a little bit different um, and we were still we were able to do that. So for the custom metadata at first, um, 
I was able to, I identified the fields that we needed very, uh, that were specific to us. We had things like uh, specific expeditions uh, from this collection. Uh, we had like the countries that was taken. We had uh, the original identifiers that the illustration had when it was created uh, in the 30s or 40s originally. Um, and once we had all those items identified, uh, I was able to work with Preservica to create this custom schema. I had some background in writing my own schema, and so they were just able to help make it exactly what we wanted. Um, and in that process, get the universal access to look this way. The links, the, the fields that you see that are blue are actually hyperlinked. So if someone came into the collection and was looking at an asset and viewed a illustration and saw that it was drawn in Ecuador and wanted to see more of what was done in Ecuador, they can click that link and then go and view everything that we have that was illustrated in Ecuador, which was really great for us and helps people navigate um, the collection uh, even better. And when we were kind of thinking, that was one of those times where we also thought about how would the public be using the this website and I think we thought well we would want to be able to easily do that and Preservica was able to help us make that easily doable. Um, I kind of look at the what our ingest package and that situation was like. So we had our preservation copies which were the TIFFs and then the presentation copies, which were the access copies, which we had as resized JPEGs to the specifications we wanted. And then the metadata files that um, Preservica also helped a lot uh, with us make, because again, since we were a, uh, were a small staff, I was the one mainly doing a lot of uh, this ingest work. Um, they were, everyone was very helpful through support on helping me figure out what I needed to do and get these metadata uh, files together and then how to create this ingest package that when going through um, the process comes out exactly how we envisioned it being on the other side. So that ends us with this wonderful <laughs> asset page that we're very happy with um, and we once we had the collection fully uh, online we held a a little uh, history league presentations, what we call it, for the organization about the Department of Tropical Research Illustrations. It is a collection that is pretty well known within the um, organization. There have been um, like illustrations from it that have been used in exhibits before. There was a members t-shirt that used an illustration from it. Um, some illustrations from it are hanging around offices. So it, it's a collection people know about and are excited about. And when we were able to share it with other people in the organization that look, we have it all up online and it's easily navigable and you can see it like this, they were, everyone was very enthusiastic and that enthusiasm is still continuing um, as we also look at other ways to use the illustrations to draw more attention to WCS and the WCS Art Librarian Archives uh, through like merchandising and other options now that these are digitized, preserved safely, and we have easy ways to look through the illustrations, um, find them, pull them, and use them for other needs. So looking ahead, what that now means for us that we had, once we got DTR done, we were ease, also easily able to bring in the second and very important collection that we needed in. Um, and we're continuing to uh, select previously digitized collections to move into Preservica. And now we have an idea of what we need to do if to make them public, uh, when we want to make them public, or uh, just to leave them there for some for preservation purposes. Um, another uh, great thing about having Preservica in place now is at the beginning of 2020, we also implemented a collection development policy for the organization where um, we go out the, the archives to the various departments, ask them for whatever material from the last year and get to accession it in. The bulk of this is uh, digital, more digital material now. And because of that, we have, because of having this DTR collection up and the other collection, we're able to be, more 
be less like abstract and be like, yeah, so it's going to go into this system that's for digital preservation and it'll rest there. We'll, but now we can be like, well, it's going into the same system that currently is holding the DTR collection that you've seen and you know very well. Um, so it helps people just understand a little bit more of what we're doing and they have an idea and they know that like, no, their, it's, their stuff isn't going to immediately be made public, but they understand that it's uh, resting in a place that is going to be uh, easily accessible if they need anything that they put into the, uh, into the Preservica or in the future, if it becomes a public collection, it'll also still be easily findable. Um, and then we're also able to kind of show off the fact that we can archive websites and we've been adding uh, social media through a few different means as well. Um, and we're just looking forward to other ways to kind of refine those processes. And uh, we're also just generally excited to keep using uh, Preservica going forward and uh, what it can do for our organization. And uh, just thank you and just uh, some small information on how to contact me if you ever need to.